Hello and welcome back to this episode of your Kingsport blog video update. I'm Jeff Fleming, Assistant City Manager for Development, and I wanted to give you a quick rundown of the activities at last night's Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting, which was March 18th. Uh, first of all, we had an annual Plan of Services report for annexation, and I think it's important to, uh, to note that we go back on every annexation once a year and report on the progress of providing services. So when we annex an area, we also pass a budget ordinance and and we fund the infrastructure improvements and all the other necessary improvements to support the annexation. Um, and then we go back and report annually until it's complete. And so if we have been tardy, it's been very, very rare. Uh, we take it very seriously and we don't annex areas that we can't afford to provide services. So um, I just want, want you to know how seriously we take that. Um, we made some changes to the zoning ordinance. Um, I would consider them housekeeping, uh, but it's really being proactive to be more developer friendly and responsive to both developers and citizens, really. Uh, we changed an ordinance about signs uh, to give administrative approval in-house for shopping center districts. Uh, previously, you had to go back to the Planning Commission, which took an extra month to get a sign permit. And, and uh, you know, within professional limits, there's really no reason to add that kind of delay on a sign request. And the example that was given was the Green Acres Shopping Center on Eastman Road. They wanted to replace the sign out front and they would have had to go, or they did have to go through the Planning Commission uh, to get approval to do that when they should have been able just to walk in and get a building permit because it clearly complied with all of the minimum requirements. So again, streamlining those regulations. Also changed uh, some rules about building height and location for two acre parcels. Uh, we will allow uh, up to 1,100 feet in accessory structures on, on greater than two acres. Uh, that does allow for more semi-rural environments uh, inside the city to be treated as such, not as a lot in a subdivision. Uh, we also made some changes to the plan development district. Um, it, the plan development district allows uh, a developer to take a piece of land that maybe has some topographic challenges and do a creative site plan to avoid um, undevelopable areas like steep slopes or rock outcroppings or blue line streams, uh, those kinds of things. And it allows them to cluster the density of the units in areas that don't conflict with those natural features. So, you know, one of the blessings of living in East Tennessee is that we have beautiful terrain. However, sometimes it's challenging if you're trying to lay out a traditional subdivision with traditional lots. Um, so when, they, when we do that and we approve a site plan, uh, the building department has to issue permits for each one of the units that goes in that site plan. Well, since those units are not technically lots, those lots don't show up on uh, the Sullivan County tax records or, or any other resource other than the original plat that was approved by the Planning Commission. So this allows, uh, when each unit comes in for a building permit approval, uh, they submit a stamped uh, plan that shows where the unit is located very specifically. That way the proposed open space and all of the flexible requirements that were allowed to develop that property uh, are maintained, the integrity of that is maintained, and it still provides for flexibility, but it also provides assurance to residents that the plan that they purchased from, based upon, will actually continue intact unless it's altered by the Planning Commission. So um, it sounds a little complicated, but uh, it's basically to protect the property owners, but also continue to allow the flexibility for the developer and the builder. And, it, and I will say that the Home Builders Association uh, did review this and agreed uh, as well. We also made some changes to, um, to keep up with current Tennessee law. Uh, as it stands right now, uh, microbreweries, uh, breweries in general, distilleries and wineries um, are um, popping up all over the state. And so in order to uh, plan for that accordingly, we needed to make some adjustments to our zoning ordinance to say where those will be most appropriate. Uh, so basically what we did is I said that those would be appropriate in uh, commercial and resident, um, excuse me, commercial and industrial districts only, not in residential areas. So not a real wide sweeping change there, uh, but we are prepared uh, when the time comes uh, for those kinds of questions to be asked uh, locally. We also transferred some funds to purchase property adjacent to the water plant. That's a continuing effort to um, basically we acquired the pet dairy and we are in the process of removing the non-contributory parts, keeping the parts that we can use for office space, and then selling or trading to adjoining property owners uh, the remainder uh, for, you know, for our, everybody's best interest. So that's what we're doing there. Uh, we also transferred funds from the Rock Springs Road Improvement Project to the Center Street uh, Island Improvement Project 
uh, in preparation for the upcoming improvements to Center Street this summer, uh, we needed to uh, replace and improve the island at Fort Henry Drive and Center Street. Um, if you drive that way, you know it's crumbled and it needs to be replaced. Uh, this will allow that to happen. Also, at Wexler Street and Center Street, an island needs to be introduced in order to uh, remove the fifth leg of the intersection at that location because when you add a fifth leg to an intersection, it creates a very complex signal system um, that would not be supported by the upcoming road improvements uh, to Center Street. Um, that money, as I said, came from the Rock Springs project, um, and that was really because of good stewardship of our project engineers in that location. So, uh, again, we were able to make, make that work better. We also uh, approved a contract with the Farmers Association of the Tri-Cities to continue to operate the downtown Kingsport Farmers Market, which will be opening um, in maybe late April, early May. So be sure and check that out. Uh, it's a great space, great uh, market, I encourage you to take uh, advantage of that. Uh, sidewalk improvements, we made arrangements with TDOT to finalize the sidewalk improvements that are required to cross the Sluice Bridge. Uh, I know that sounds, uh, it sounds like all you got to do is just uh, walk across the bridge, but you have to put in, uh, uh, it has to be raised, it has to be, uh, there has to be a barrier between the sidewalk and traffic crossing the bridge, and so to comply with the TDOT requirements, uh, we needed to make some arrangements uh, to do that, so that's what we did at that location. And then finally, uh, we made arrangements to execute all documents necessary to acquire property. I mentioned earlier uh, the pet dairy site. Well, Tennessee Electric and the City Water Department are basically swapping some land to provide access to the raw water intake uh, at the Holston River. Um, you know, thousands of people drive by John B. Dennis Highway every day and don't realize they're driving over the main water take intake to the city water system because it goes through it, uh, a tunnel that goes under John B. Dennis and it comes out on the other side on a cliff and then it goes straight down to the river in between the dam and Eastman. So that raw water intake is absolutely critical to the operation of our water system um, and so it's time to upgrade that water intake and uh, this will allow that to happen. So uh, doing a lot of infrastructure improvements right now trying to make sure that we take care of all the basics um, and you know that's what you got to do in order to pre prepare to do other things like uh, you know development is always fun but you got to take care of the basics first. So that's what we're doing right now and that's your quick update uh, from last night's board meeting and again I'm Jeff Fleming Assistant City Manager for Development and thank you for watching.